Hi Rose Developers and welcome to this Q&A video. In this video I'm going to answer or more precisely complete the already answered question here. So this user asks basically how can I control the speed of um, a joint through C++? So here Chapolina also, uh, already answered giving uh, the theory, the link on how to do this. So Gazebo gives a very detailed documentation on how to, um, uh, in theory, move the joints in Gazebo. What I'm going to do is complete it with a hands-on experience uh, and an example, a real example and simulation. Yeah. So before anything else, remember that the construct is your YouTube channel to go to if you want to know anything about ROS related topics like AI with ROS or navigation or drones, anything related to ROS you can find it here. So check it out. And if you have any doubts or you want to complete your, your knowledge or you have doubts on what I explained, you, you can go to Robot Ignite Academy where you can find um, plug and play courses, no installation required with simulations, and you can learn loads of stuff about ROS. Yeah, so without further ado, let's get started. So, I'm going to use ROS Development Studio, which is an online uh, ROS development platform for this, and I've created this simple simulation with which emulates basically what this user wants to do, which is um, a two wheeled robot and i'm going to show you what i've done to make it work so i created this package here uh, let me uh, this one the set speed joint cpp i've i posted the um, the git and the rosject in the description down below and then you can play around with this mm, in a very easy manner so don't worry and Essentially what I've done is, if we go to the world, I'm spawning this simple vehicle, and this simple vehicle is, um, I'm not going to talk about how it's built, because it's really, really simple. We just, I'm going to talk about the plugin that I made, which is essentially the same thing as differential drive, and this is the thing that we have already a differential drive controller for this. So if you want to do this for a two wheeled robot, then use this. But if you want to do something else, then this, this video is for you because you learn how to do it yourself. Yeah. So basically we've done a, a model plugin with some arguments which are basically the PID values if we want to use PID movement if we want to use it or not and a namespace just in case you want to use this plugin with various robots at the same time so you give it a namespace and that way you have a topic for each robot yeah so how to compile these plugins well CMake list, you have to add this C and compile it, add the libraries, and that's quite it. You have to give a dependencies on Gazebo ROS and, and ROS CPP, and don't forget to give a C 11 support. And then in the package, you have to add this uh, Gazebo uh, lib uh, path so that it can find the plugins that you create. And this one is just for the models, in case you want to use a model, which in this case we are using it, yeah? Okay, then the, the important stuff, which is the plugin. The plugin is uh, based on a model plugin, which means that you have to put it inside a model. And we're going to go over more or less what I've done. Uh, we have the load function. In this load function, we get the, the model, which is the parent. And we get also the SDF to get the extra arguments for this. We also set the time so that we can afterwards update the speed at a certain rate and we don't overflow with loads of updates. 
here we get the values of the arguments that we stated here in the world uh, sorry in in the model there we go yeah and essentially we get them and we save them in a, in a class variable then we get the, the namespace and so on we initialize the ROS the ROS nodes here and we say okay we want to activate the PID control or we don't want to activate it yeah because it gives loads of problems if, if you don't set up the PID right so it has its pros and cons but I've made both so that you can see the most basic way of doing it and the most complex and way of doing it yeah okay then we have two subscriptions which are basically for the left and right wheel topics so we can send them commands and that's quite it then we have the uh, on update method which uh, what we do is okay when we have to um, update yeah we do two things or we activate we we move it through the, the PIDs or we don't. If we don't, it's very simple because you only have to get the model, get the joint, which is the name of the joint, and then set the velocity, which is zero, which is the, the axis. And normally it's zero, means the first axis that you can move, which normally is the only one that you can move and then the value in this case right wheel speed magnitude this right wheel speed magnitude is updated in the callbacks of the topics yeah so each time you send one it updates so that when we send we are always sending some some values yeah this is not very secure because normally in robots it's better that if you don't send anything it sets this value to zero so depends on what you want to do it but this is the most basic way of doing it this way it it simply works um, as explained in this um, uh, document which I won't go in, in depth but basically it has some pros but also some cons and if you want a more physics based a more realistic way of doing it um, it's good to use PIDs for this and for this we are going to talk about how this was set up which is we get the joint controller we add the joints that we want to control in this case these two uh, we, we get the name then we set the velocity for each of the names yeah and then we set the velocity target to zero in, in the initialization and here in the set velocity PID we set the PID so like KP KI and KD yeah and then in the updates is where we set the speed which is we get the the joint controller and then we set the velocity target for the right and the left wheel and that's quite it yeah I leave all the code in the in the answer of course and I'll leave also the git and the ROS check just in case you want to just plug and play and play around and let's see this in action so if for example we wanted to not use it so no we don't want to use the PID we launch the simulation so if you're in a local computer you just have to kill the gazebo and launch it again Okay, there we go. So we hit play and we have the robot here. And then we uh, uh, let me put it like this so we can see both of them. Then we are going to uh, Rust Topic Publish Simple Write Double Tab. And then we uh, put a value 5. 
there you go so it's moving the right wheel the red one if for example we hit minus then it goes backwards just with one wheel and if we want for example uh, last topic publish uh, simple robot left there we go minus 0.5 there we go so we have our robot weppa our robot moving in a straight line because we are uh, setting the same speed for both wheels yeah so good that's good okay what if we want to control it with PID it's the same exact same thing the only thing that we have to change is we have to put here yes and we relaunch the simulation So uh, now we have it and it's more or less the same thing so if we zoom in and we set for example oh, sorry uh, ross topic publish uh, simple right speed and uh, report 0.5 there we go so as you see it's it, it works much better but it has um, uh, some some problems also because using PID means that it can go very crazy if you set a value of speed that it's unrealistic so you have to val uh, value what you want for your simulation if you want realism PIDs are much better. If you want something fast that works, just use the, the simple way of doing it. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's quite it. So if you like the video, thumbs up and please consider subscribing. We publish videos every day. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Hasta la próxima.